Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hi everyone, this is Daphne Dosuna Clemency from CSA Department, Assistant Professor Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. So today's topic is about perceptron. The perceptron is very basic topic. It is very important as well. What is this perceptron is about? So what is the use of reading this perceptron? Perceptron is a basic machine learning algorithm. It is used for binary classification. What is this binary classification? Binary classification is nothing but whether if you want to detect a cat or dog or any two thing S or no. 1 or 0, all these are binary classification. To solve such kind of problem, here we will be using perceptron. So, and it is a basic step for artificial neural network. So, when you talk about deep learning, perceptron plays a vital role. The concept of perceptron is built up to the deep learning concept. In 19th mid century, the perceptron was introduced and basic concept behind the per introducing perceptron is working as a human brain. How the neurons uh, works in the human brains, how we enact like an how we uh, act to a situation, what kind of uh, action our brain takes place to avoid a situation, what, what, what are the things that we are doing can be represented using the neurons, how the neurons works through an electrical signals and it also uses the previous information. So that is the core line concept of building a perceptron. So here comes linearly separable concept. So what is this linearly separable and non-linearly separable data? So uh, perceptron works well on the linearly separable data. Say for example, from this diagram, from the A, the plus and minus is given in the uh, graph actually. So we can separate the plus from minus using a linear set. What is linear? It is nothing but single line. So we can separate plus and minus using a single line. So we can separate the data finally. So that is called linearly separable data. Whereas in the diagram 2, which is B, you cannot separate the minus and plus using a single line. So that is called non-linearly separable data. So uh, for linearly separable data we will be using perceptron for solving the problem. So going to the next slide, this is the architecture of perceptron. Talking about the architecture of perceptron is very basic. So here we will be having an input network and the input network is connected to the neuron. So the, uh, I will be telling you the further slide how it works. So here we will be adding something called weight. Weight is like an importance or the relationship between the input network, input layer to the output layer. So how strong it is connected. Weight is in other words, non-technically the weight can be defined as priority. So how priority, how important it is to have a weight. Initially in the perceptron, we will not be assigning any standard weights. Initially we will be assigning random weights. And one more thing, uh, the input variables should be one. A real value. So, we will be taking uh, input real value as an input from the outside world, we will be taking an input value and for that input value, we will be assigning weights randomly and the weights will further calculate. Let me tell you how it is calculated. These are the components of before going to the process, we, we have to know what is what. So, these are the concepts of uh, uh, components of perceptron. So, we will be having input network. What is this input layer? It is nothing but a uh, neurons input. We will be taking inputs from the electrical signals uh, via the, I mean electrical signals from the outside world we will be having inputs and I told you further, I told you before that input should be a real value. And coming to the weights, weights is nothing but the amount of weightage that you are going to give, the amount of importance that you are going to give to the certain inputs. So initially we will be assigning random inputs, so in not in a particular order, we will be assigning random inputs for all the weights and you will be calculating the output. So if the output output is not satisfied, we will be coming back and we will be adjusting the weight or updating the weights. And bias, bias is nothing but an additional term you will be adding to the calculation, we will be seeing what is that calculation is about. Activation function, so the most important thing that decides the output here in perceptron is activation function. What is that activation function? It helps you to uh, whether the neurons is fired or not. It helps you to check whether the, uh, the corresponding input uh, multiplied with the weight is working out or not. So for that we will be using a technical term fired or not. What is meant by firing which is nothing but the neurons gets activated or not. Okay, so we will be having a number of activation function. I have listed only three. We will be having a number of activation function. So here I have given step function, sine function and sigma function. Every function has an uh, boundary value which is 0 to 1, it is minus 1 to plus 1 and again it is 0 0.1. According to the problem, according to the scenario, we will be changing the activity.
activation function. So activation function plays a vital role when you are learning machine learning and you will be getting an output. The output value is a binary output. So a, uh, either it can be 0 or it can be 1. If it is 0, the neurons is not fired or not activated. If it is 1, yes, you have got an output. Going to the next slide, this is a basic diagram for perceptron. So here in this diagram, you will be having x1, x2, x3, you know, which is called your input value. It can be of xn, I mean xi. W term is represented as w1, w2, which is called nothing but your uh, weight term. So I have I, I have told you what is uh, activation function. I told you how to calculate it, right? So all this action will be done in this neuron. So this is the, in this neurons, you will be having, uh, you need to calculate the, uh, you need to multiply the, your input value with your weight value and one more thing is added, bias should be added to it and, and followed by you need to calculate the activation function. So this diagram, I have elaborated this diagram in this form. So this is how you will be representing. So here is an input value, here will be the corresponding weight value. The corresponding weight should be random value. Initially the weight should be random value and then we will be summing up this which is summation of xi into y, wi plus your bias value. Bias is a constant value you will be using and then you will be going up. That value will be represented in the function called z. So obviously you come up with an equation. Now z is equal to summation of xi into wi, right? Okay, now we are going for activation function. I told you what is the importance of activation function. Once you got the output, you will be checking the activation function. One, it is, once it is activated, you will be reaching your desired output. So activation function is re represented by sigma and it will be denoted in sigma and it will be represented by letter A. Going to the next slide, from the previous slide we have uh, gone through what is perceptron, how it works, right? Okay, so for example, if you get, you are getting a scenario that you are output, you are not getting a desired output. So what you will be doing at that time? That time I told you in a previous slides, right? And that time what you will be doing here, you will be getting an output, right? So if the output is not desired output, if the output is not satisfied for you, what you will be doing, you will be going backtracking or back propagating. You will be backtracking to the weights and you will be updating the weights. This is what the uh, complete perceptron rule. So while reading this now, you will be understanding how the deep learning concept works. Okay, here you will be dealing with one layer. So in deep learning concept, you will be dealing with multiple thousands of layers you will be dealing with. That is the only difference. That is why it is framed as building block or a uh, baby step for knowing your deep learning concept. Going on to the next slide, so here uh, that we have explained it, what I have explained you, what is W, what is A, what is B and what is X. What is W is again, it is an real valued weights and again one more time I am repeating, the weight should be, initially the weight should be a random weight without knowing the importance or without knowing the uh, relationship between the input and the output, you will be assigning the random weights. The weight can be of random and the B is called bias, bias is nothing but an, an additional value which stabilizes your output function and x is your input value and this is how we frame the equation I told you in the previous slide. So what is your z value? z value is nothing but your summation of xi into wi plus your bias term. So here we will be calculating the z value and this is what the complete equation f of x. What is this f of x? If it is 1 the neurons get activated if it is 0 it is not. So this is the back propagation. Once you are reaching the output, if you are not satisfying with your output, we will be backtracking or back propagating. The process of back propagating here is you will be updating the weights. That is the only way you will be backtracking. So I told you initially you will be assigning random weights, right? So now while updating the weights, you will be assigning uh, weights according to the needs. Now you know what you need and you will be updating the weights alone. The weight part is updated. If you go to the previous slide, the same calculation will be done. So Z is equal to summation of xi and wi plus bias and followed by your activation function. So this is all about the perceptron and once your output is not desired, you will be backtracking and getting the output right. Okay. So the perceptron is divided into two types basically. One is single layer perceptron and other one is multi layer perceptron. Single layer perceptron is what we saw so far. Multi layer perceptron you will be having it a multiple layers. So which is nothing but and one more major difference, uh, difference between this both is in single layer perceptron you can solve linearly separable problem which, which I told you in the slide 2 it seems. So what is linearly separable right? In using multi layer perceptron we can able to solve non linearly separable data also. That is the one more advantage of multi layer perceptron. So here 
these are the limitations so comparing to perceptron basically it works I, though we have two concepts we can solve either multi, uh, linearly separable or, and also we can uh, we can also solve the non linearly separable data using multi layer perceptron uh, but the perceptron is very very well versed in solving the uh, linearly separable data that is the only uh, when you see the linearly uh, separable data you will be going for the perceptron so this is the core concept of uh, learning about perceptron from this video we know what is perceptron is and how it works the architecture of perceptron and the back propagation process of perceptron uh, we have saw two types of perceptron one is um, linearly i mean one is single layer perceptron another one is uh, multi layer perceptron which has many layers actually so so that's all about this video thank you for watching